So uh, I'm going to call the. Um, Hi, Sherry. The, the Hi. Dog. I'm going to call the dog hearing to order. So this is um, uh, this is a quasi judicial proceeding. Um, so we're just going to is will be um, a little more formal than we usually are. We're going to uh, swear people in who want to give testimony. We'll take the testimony. Um, listen to any concerns, ask any questions that any of us have, and then um, later we'll deliberate and we'll put together a written, um, like, findings. Response. Hmm? Response. A response, yeah, with our findings. Okay, so um, pursuant to 20 VSA section 3546, um, the select board will hear and receive testimony on a complaint of a um, well, it's termed vicious dog um, concerning a dog presently residing on Mathville, on Mathville Road. Um, so, we need to swear in people who are interested in giving us some testimony. We have, we have a written complaint, um, but maybe we could start with an overview of the situation. Somebody would be willing. Are you, are you going to speak? Miranda, are you going to speak? Yeah, I'll speak to my okay. Whatever. If whoever is going to testify, just raise your right hand. You promise to tell the truth about the matter before the board of the pains and penalties of perjury. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. I do. I do. Okay. Good. So they're all sworn. Excellent. <laughs> all right. So, um, Lynn, do you want to just come up Diane. here? Or sorry, come up here so we can hear you. Please. Please. Um, you all read it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, um, the dog came over to kill the chickens, said and how to find them. Um, I would just like the dog to stay, dogs to stay at their house in their yard, and my chickens to stay alive in my yard. The chickens are right out the back of your, up the top, right below where right yeah. down, down below where the chicken barn is. Any kind of fence yes. around the uh, standard chicken wire fence, just chicken wire fence. How long? Four feet. Three, four feet, yeah. Three, four feet. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the chickens are penned in for sure. Yeah. Check it out. I just know. <laughs> Bigger shit. Huh? Yeah. Uh, other questions for Diane right now? Sherry? Not really, I think I understand the problem. Okay, Sherry? I'm fine. Okay. For now. It's easy. Is there anything else that you want me to? I mean, I, I feel like I wrote it all out. Right. Yep. We go ahead and write it out. So. It, it, it would be good to go on record that what you're bringing to the board formally to so everybody can hear it. What part? Because just what you provided to us. Even though it's written. Even though it's written. Could we read it into the record? Sure. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Well, I wasn't me to actually read. I was just, just saying, put it enter, in enter it into the record. Okay. If, if we, we all agree, we read it. Right. If we've all read it. So everybody understands right. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. admit it into the record. But it wasn't part of the warning, so I don't know. You know. I can put it up as meeting attachments. Okay. Right. Yeah, right. They were, they, you did a good job of explaining it. Thoughts. Right. Don't need to hear all of it again. Okay. I don't. Right. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Thank you, Diane. You're all right. Um, I'm sorry. I don't hear you. I don't know your name. Miranda. Miranda. Would you care to offer um, anything about your dogs or? Uh, yeah. Do you want me to come there? Yes, please. So um, when she came to us, I accept her responsibility. I, I understand the frustration and I'm very sorry about the chicken incident. I'm happy to pay for them and the dogs are on the leash now. Um, and the spring you know, stuff thaws out about how we're building up and talking. I'm sorry, what was that last part? I would like to build on a cow. Pen, uh, pen, pen, yeah. Yeah. I love huskies. I had three huskies for 10 years. 
Huskies are great fun, mm. but they don't give a damn about your opinion about what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they're, they're, they're not like German Shepherds. That We had a 10-foot fence of hardware cloth to keep them in. Um, yeah, they're, they're great fun, but boy, you can't trust them. Yeah, I mean, they're fine with the, the little kids and the, the cats that are right. home, but yeah, unfortunately, this is what happens. Yeah. So, um, did you previously have a fence, or was this a neighbor? I have an underground fence, and, well, you know. They'll go right through it. They figured that out. Yeah. Right. They know if they, they get zapped if they go through it. And then they know they're on the other side. Right. So at that point, the only thing it does is keep them from coming home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, they're, they're so, so the current plan is to keep them they're hitched. hitched. Now, yeah. All they're any hitched, time they're, they're outside. Back up, I still have their collars on them, okay. so if they slip, you know, if they got loose, they still be in there. But mm -hmm. they are hooked. They've been hooked since um, I talked to the officer. I think it was that when I was talking to the officer. There was something that said that, that they didn't have a license on their collar? That no. they had names, but they didn't have a license. Yeah, they didn't have names or a license on it. No. I have a license. I, I just didn't. I apparently had lapsed. I didn't realize that I thought I was getting a renewal notice. I didn't. Honestly, now I have it on the calendar to renew annually every January? Uh, or is it between January and April? Between January. So, January to renew. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Do the dog license. <laughs> so they are licensed now? Yeah, they're licensed. They're all up to date on their vaccines and stuff. Okay. Yeah. And you said you are willing to pay for damages to chickens? Yeah, I, okay. I offered when she came over. I mean, I know, and I apologize, I know the conversation that he had. She was okay. upset. I was upset. Um, okay. You know, they're my dogs and my responsibility, and I'm, I'm financially responsible for them, so I know that. Okay. Do you, I have just two things. One is, do you understand the process that we're going through? Do you have any questions around that, around the dog ordinance? Yeah, I do have a couple of questions. So, why didn't you answer that earlier? Mm -hmm. um, I think it was on the last page. Like something, if we come to an agreement, I have to notify the board or get your commission if I if they go outside of the town limits or that that's if the if I move or yep. uh, that's if, if, sold it, or whatever. if that's if this board deems that your dogs are considered vicious dogs. Oh okay. Okay. Um, and then the other question that I have for you is do you understand that there's a cost to replace the chickens? Yes. But there's also a cost of feeding the chickens, taking yeah. care of the chickens, yep. raising okay. the chickens. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there's like there's a couple different yes. scenarios. I just there. wanna make this as right as possible. Unfortunately, it's a bad situation. Okay. Yeah. So this played out recently december is that's what the date was yeah um and previously it looks like in november as well right but i mean yeah, in I the last aware, three months I, or whatever I guess I wasn't aware so i guess my that. point being is this is the first official action that's been taken other than the officers visited this yeah. this is um with these dogs this is the first official action with the dog warrants with the select board having yep. a hearing there was a, a complaint filed on 10 4 of 2021 from another resident in Macville yep. where um, 24 chickens were killed. And are you aware of that? I was not aware a complaint was filed, no. A uh, police report, not with the select board, but there was a police report. Yes, yes, I went over. Okay, so you're aware of that. All right, so, but that's the whole history of the deal. I mean, yeah, I'm just, there was, yep, yeah. I'm good with that. I just was trying to make sure that. How many? But, yep, I'm good. Thank I mean, you it sounds like you want to be responsible. And yeah. I agree. Yeah, that I, mean, I know they're, they're pretty reasonable folks. And so, hopefully yeah. we can figure it out that they need to be 
Yeah, they, they need to be under sledge. under wraps and yeah. get a dog sled. Work them, <laughs> make them tired. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Daisy's the one that it yeah. does happen again. Uh, something you, okay. you've had it now. Yeah. Well, I, unfortunately, no. Uh, anybody I've them. known has had huskies. They're they're a hard breed. But if you're they're all diligent dog. about the leash and the hitching yeah. and yeah. right, and you can, can build, build a kennel, build I mean, a they fence, they can, they can be manageable in the, in the spring. Yeah, yeah, something. Like that. But they need exercise. They do need exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Take up running. Hitch a dog okay. to your waist so and I, take up running. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, they do, and you know, I do apologize. I, I am really sorry. I, you know, I would be upset in your situation as well. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. So very likely, I'll just you know, spoiler alert, maybe, but very likely we'll issue a ruling that says your dogs need to be leashed until you build a kennel. You need to build a kennel. They can't be running around free, and you need to. Um, make preparations. Yep. So it won't be anything. That'll be that. Yep. And we don't want to see you back here. Right. <laughs> That's it. <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> well, not only not well, for this. we could. Yeah, we could use some. You know, what do we need? A lister? No. Uh, there's a there's a list. There's some of things open we offices. Need. We'd love to see you here. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, trust me, we being here on these things is not our favorite thing to do either. It's yeah. the worst part the worst job of a selectman is dealing with the dogs. Yeah. So um yeah, I'm happy to pay for them, check for my order of hours, I guess somebody okay. will let me know. Yes. Yep. What is that? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys have anything else? You folks, okay. that, that'd be satisfactory to you folks, that basic plan. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. So, um, I, I'm going to um, adjourn the public hearing, which is the next thing on the agenda. Let's do it. Um, so, 6 o'clock, I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. First item is to set adjust agenda. I know we have one item to strike, and uh, it's number 6. Yep. Do we have anything else? I love it when we can take one off. Yeah. Could I have a motion to... Uh, uh, a motion to approve the amended agenda. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's, Hi. Okay, that's everyone. Thank you. Motion carries. Next, uh, so we have our agenda. Communication from the audience. Audience is a little we thin. We have new chairs in the audience. We have, there are new chairs. They're when, not. When did that take place? They're not full. They're not that new, are they? First meeting? They've been there a while? Yeah. Because that's way better than what I'm sitting in. Well, you can ch trade. I'm on upgrade. All right, all right. So, uh, and it, so the audience communication is just with the chairs tonight. Um, <laughs> Next, select board to approve minutes from last time, which was January the 5th, seems like yesterday. Motion to approve the minutes for January 5th. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? I thought they were good. All in favor of approving the minutes as written for January 5th, please say aye. 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 Uh, I think that was an aye from Kaylee, too. <laughs> you got Nancy okay, so um, all. Well, that's everyone, so the minutes are approved. Next is town manager's report given by Mr. David Upson. Okay, I was just looking, trying to get in touch with Rick. <coughs> okay, um, just a downtown designation application is complete and members of the, down, the town and the downtown partnership will travel to Montpelier on Monday to attend the state board meeting for downtown designation, so that's exciting. Uh, attend, I attended a monthly LVRT regional council meeting to discuss, that's a typo, potential issues surrounding the LVRT and the use of it as we move forward with the public. Um, the regional planning commission is finalizing the grant agreement with the state 
to start the scoping study for local amenities, which should begin by early fall. So that's really just a work in progress with mm -hmm. the regional partners, the local partners, just trying to anticipate problems with the trail before they happen. Um, two new high efficiency hybrid hot water heaters were installed in the public safety building and memorial building, partially paid for by a grant from Hardwick Electric in partnership with Efficiency Vermont. Uh, work began on a nitrogen generator system for the memorial building sprinkler system and which is going it's not it's all hung up but it's not installed yet um, and then the last thing um oh the board you guys previously authorized me to spend no more than fourteen thousand on the network hardware um i met with the consultant that's going to do the work to install it and they went to finalize the purchase they added a couple items and they removed a couple items but the cost went up 948 dollars so if you could and this is for network security. Network security hardware. Um, we need a new motion. Um, can you just authorize me to spend authorize an additional thousand? More than fifteen thousand dollars. All right, and that. Is can we have a second on that? Second. So motion on the table to authorize the town manager to spend up to fifteen thousand on uh, network hardware for security. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Hi. Okay, short, that's everyone. Short and sweet. That's it. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Yep. LBRT. Yeah. Uh, any discussion about maintenance? In those meetings? Yep. We, okay, so the big question right now is um, summertime. Yep. And when VAST, VAST controls the trail in the wintertime, they're responsible for, so if, if a tree falls down and someone makes a complaint, the VAST goes and takes care of it. The local club goes and takes care of it. Right. Where do they complain to? Um, well, if they call my yeah. office, if they call the police department, I'll say call the... Chances are it's already going to be removed because of the snow wind trails. It, that stuff gets... You won't have to worry about... Fairly that. quickly. Right. Well, yep. What you're going to have to worry about is the VAST is only going to cut the tree out. Right. right. So at that point, that tree is going to fall in the ditch, which for... That is the beginning of the process. Of that, filling the ditches. Filling the ditch, mm -hmm. which causes the erosion right. and the filling mm -hmm. culverts and so forth. So, so what we're talking about and what we're trying to make sure happens is that at least in our region. Let's talk about our town. Yeah, our, okay, our town is we're not going to do any maintenance. We're not going to be going out. We're not sending our road crew out. We're not sending volunteers out at this point right now to do any sort of trail maintenance. That's gonna be covered by the district, the, the VTRANS district. The VTRANS district staff. Staff, and whoever they hire to do it, is that's who's gonna do the work. Uh, is, but we're right, in two what districts? level has this been talked about? It's in their management plan. The new one? Because I'm not here that and it's, people it's a, at all. It's still a, a question that's up in the air. And what we don't want to happen is like, for example, St. Johnsbury and Danville has had this trail open for a while mm -hmm. and they're friends of the LVRT group. They get calls and they go out and do the maintenance. Yeah. And we don't want there to be different, um, different practices along the trail. So then users in Hardwick <laughs> think that we're responsible for the maintenance of the trail. So it's still a so big I've, question. I've been involved like 18 years in this trail. Yeah. What you just said is 180 degrees from what's been talked about for 17 and three quarters of those years. Right. It's totally different. Right. Totally. There's nobody anywhere in AOT has talked about the district offices taking care of this ever. Yeah. So it's not going to happen. Well, that's. It's not even on the board. It's not even been discussed. It's not in the budgets. It's, it's not on it's the in their, It's in their LVRT it's, management that, plan. I worked for five years, for, but I worked for five years for an LBR management plan that mm -hmm. was just thrown aside right. at, at a whim. Yeah. And a new one, silly one, fiction, mm -hmm. was put in place. Yeah. Well, so hopefully they is, figure it out. are we going to realize that there's this? I mean, I don't I think we'll probably why. realize it as soon as, as it soon as it's done again. Yeah. Or before, hopefully, when we see those, we see the ditches filling and we call I, them I up and they don't. I just don't feel like as a town we're being responsible by ignoring 
back. But I think we need to, if, if they have created a management plan that says they're going to maintain yeah, it, right. we have to give them the opportunity first, give them the opportunity to prove uh, that, to do that. I mean, and then I when agree they, with you guys. It's just it's, so frustrating. It's, it's very frustrating. Totally agree. <laughs> it's been a long, long road. So, we don't need amenities. We don't need to be doing a study about amenities. We need to be doing a study about how we're going to fund the maintenance to keep infrastructure in place so it can be used by everyone. Does you no good to have a portal that side a trail that doesn't exist? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's just. It's very. Mind. It's very. Not to keep going on this, but it's very clear that the state put the 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 cart before the horse. Yeah. yeah. In terms of being able to handle the masses using the trail. And they should not, because uh, a whole bunch of us have been kicking and screaming about it for. Mm -hmm. All right. It's it's a, it's a, it's unfortunately this whole thing was put together by the feel good legislators in Mount Payer that 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 are doing uh, you know doing doing their thing to, to make their legacy something important um, and it's not for the good of the communities that the, the trail serves at all. It's very unfortunate. But the trail is getting built. It is. It's nearly we spent thirty complete. million dollars this summer on it. Yep. So yay! Yeah. So next summer, when it's all washed out, no biggie. We'll have portalettes. Yeah. <laughs> or not. <laughs> okay. Or not. Okay. Or not. Yeah. That's all right. Good. All right. Let's go. Hang anyway. on. All right. Sorry. Sorry. It's You're okay. Fine. It's all right. You were done. Yep. Uh, any more questions for town manager? Yeah. Okay. You gotta move to the road foreman. He's plowing. Oh yeah, or getting ready to plow. Or sanding, I hope. Yeah. They they have been doing a lot well, of sanding on the back roads. The streets here, the big ice curb we had all week. Oh, that's a good question. They're on. Huh? I just didn't wonder. That's all. I trip okay. over it every morning going to yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we have a road crew? <clears throat> all right. There was okay. a there was a period of like five hours. Four hours that that softened up enough to be able to move it. I know. Okay, we're gonna you know move what excuses on. Excuses are like. Don't you? We're moving on. <laughs> I mean, we're moving on the police department report because our chief Mike Henry is here. Yes. So tell us uh, what do you want to uh, tell us about what you guys have been doing. He's been a while. Nothing's been happening. How much? It's been pretty quiet. So. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? What? I didn't hear anything. Okay. I wasn't right. around for anything big. I heard there were a lot of kids running around. <laughs> yeah. um, I do have copies of the annual report. A report, okay. Yeah. Um, just do you want them to have that? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be the town report. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Good. And, um, Thank you. okay, good. So oh, this is an annual report? Yeah, just uh, from yep. 2022 broke down. Uh, it's going to be in the town report, you said? Yeah. Yes, but those lovely graphs had to turn into smaller tables. But I, yes. I didn't know what I was doing. Oh. So. But the information is going to be there. The yeah. information is going to be there. So we can, I'll read it. We'll read it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, just broken down into calls for service. Sherry uh, doesn't have that. <laughs> Good. Sherry. Hold on a Sherry. second here. I love talking, but it's hard to tell who's talking and what's being said. Okay, thank Sorry. you. For, thank you for the feedback. So, um, Mike, we'll we'll shut up for a minute, and you reiterate. What so you just gave it's just us. what's going to be in the town report, but uh, just broken down into calls for services, uh, traffic reported crashes, uh, our tickets, warnings, arrests. Everything's broken down into certain fields, so you can uh, look and see what's been going on for the last year uh, at the Harvard Police Department. Um, and it's going to be in the town report. It'll be in the town report. So there's that. That's great. So one of the complaints that we started getting is, uh, you know, it's parking. All right. I'm just going to see if uh, the parking in the handicap spots. So we've been uh, working on that. What we notice is there's a big discrepancy between the town fines and the state fines. The state fine for parking in a handicapped spot is $306. The town fine, uh, I think we need to increase that to like $50. So I don't know if, how we propose that, but- We uh, need to change the ordinance? Yeah, yeah probably. change the ordinance. <coughs> uh, so there's a copy. What do we charge now? 10. 
25 for 20, that. Oh, yeah, 25. Yeah. It's broken down into it 10. It's 300 if it's a state ticket. Yeah. Right. But we don't write state tickets. We do private. write state. Yeah, we can write the state tickets, but I think it would be better. That's that's a pretty big one. Yeah, so, so you're saying if we increase it to the <coughs> point where we write a municipal ordinance ticket. Right. I think it's better to write the municipal yeah. ordinance ticket for these. So could... Um, there's a list on there. Is it possible that for a for an upcoming meeting, you guys could mm -hmm. work together to revise that list to what you think is more appropriate? Yeah, I think everything else on there, personally, is appropriate. I think just the handicap one should be a little bit more serious. Okay. Uh, because the state takes that one serious. Let's park it in the crosswalk. Uh, what is it? Ten dollars. Oh, Ten dollars. What's that? Ten. Ten dollars for parking in the crosswalk. Do you want to raise that one too? No, I don't, because I. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. One at a time, one at a time. Yeah, no, I'm fine with whatever they decide. Okay. Yeah. So we'll propose that, bring it back. Yep. That'd be awesome. Okay. Um, the important thing is we're writing the tickets. I like that idea. Yeah. Well, you can see the breakdown of where. Yeah, no, I, this but, is good right here. This just brought me to something else. It doesn't show the municipal t tickets that we've written in here. I forgot to add that in here. So this should really help some of the uh, people that, uh, that that want to see what you guys really are doing. Um, it will give them the information they need. So the only other thing, the uh, seniors uh, center has been getting utilized a lot more often. So what I have now is a. Uh, schedule for who's going to be uh, in the senior center at what time. Um, it's online. Um, I'm going to give mainly the people who utilize it access to view it, but it's also posted in uh, the senior center so that we don't have people doubling up at times in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's if someone wants to use that, they go through you or through you yep. or together? Yep. Uh, actually, I'm going to put him on it too. So like so the snowmobile meeting is already on there, no. or do we need Mon to get it on? Monday is it Monday well, night. Monday, but I mean, do we need to contact? Do we need to fill something out? Contact. That's, yeah. that's enough right now. Yep. The fourth Monday. Okay. At what time? Seven o'clock. Okay. So okay. that way, the, yeah. the rec committee meets there now too, right? Yep. Yep. Hmm. It's a good space to meet. It's easy parking, easy access. We just had uh, just a couple times where people had kind of doubled up, so we're trying to. Yep. I agree. Utilize it a little bit better. Um, it makes sense. That's true for the meeting rooms in this building, right? There's a schedule. Yep. You have to sign up to use a room. Yep. And other than that, uh, we just sent our radar units out to be serviced. Um, and uh, we got one back and waiting on the other one. So. Did we get rid of the old cruiser, finally? Did you? No, we did not. Danny wants it. Danny wants it. I don't all wheel drive. I just, uh, you know, I'll, that, that's just, I'll get in trouble with is all that is. <laughs> um, but did you see there's actually, there's actually some race tracks throughout America that are actually having is it crowned Vix. Um, that's like the, that's the class. That's what they're racing. Well, this like, is the Taurus. Well, any of the old police, oh, you know, okay. The there you go. The yeah. That's what you can do in your spare time. The retired, the retired police cars, yeah, basically. All right. So they everybody wants to get into it. We've got one for sale. Any yeah. other questions for Mike? No. All right. No. Mark Thank you. Me. No. You're not up yet. <laughs> uh, but now. you are now. You're okay. So thank you very much. Um, uh, Mike Sullivan, you are next for the Hardwick Electric Department report. Thank you for forwarding the uh, packet for your board. Um, that was helpful. Okay, so um, you guys can hear me clearly because I can hear uh, Sherry and Kaylee clearly. But you all sound a little bit underwater. Can you hear me good? Yeah, we, yes. can, we can hear you. here to share. Uh, first of all, if you have my manager's report there, you'll see that uh, we filed the rate increase uh, with the PUC on the 10th. I've been 
speaking about that and trying to raise awareness for probably over the last eight or nine months at least. And we ended up filing for a 13.03% increase, which is about a $14 increase on a typical 600 kilowatt hour monthly bill. And that would land us now at $121 from $107. So since 2009, we've been locked in and solid and steady at the rates we're at, but uh, the time has come and this is where we're at. And we'll see how it gets through the process of the state. Um, so, so Mike, they usually typically, go ahead. Oh, I just going to mention that um, I did see that there's, you're, we are not the only utility that are seeking rate increase. No. Every, no and basically, not. everyone is. <laughs> There are a lot of them. Yeah, are, and actually several, uh, Washington Electric Co-op, uh, Vermont Electric Co-op, Stowe Electric, several of them have had uh, two and three in the time frame that we're now just doing one. And Stowe actually just filed for another one recently, and Washington Electric just filed one for recently, but they're already planning their next one. So I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at, and this should lock us in for another uh, long, you know, long-term uh, window of solid, steady rates for the customers. Just trying to help you out there, man. I saw you were talking to Danny, but I didn't hear anything. I said I was just trying to help you out. Okay, appreciate it. <laughs> All right, next one. I just want to give you a, a kind of a storm overview. The Christmas storm hits on the 23rd at about uh, 4 a.m. And by 8 a.m. we had over 100 events causing 2,200 customer outages. Uh, the eight HED operation staff and three uh, tree trimmers from the AD Tree Service Worked until 1.30 a.m. that well, Saturday morning after restoring service to 1,600 of those 22 customers. Everybody went home, got four hours of sleep, and we're right back at it at 500 Saturday morning. By that night, we had restored service to all but 58 customers. Uh, and then Sunday morning, we were right back at it again, and at the end of the day, we had only three events left. Uh, affecting 11 customers, and all of those were vacant seasonal homes, so we finished them up over the next Monday and Tuesday. Couldn't be proud of our team. Uh, they knocked a grand slam home run performance, uh, and it couldn't be happier. It was just fantastic. Uh, all the dangers we had, and no accidents other than a tree uh, came down, smashing one of our pickups, but that could be fixed. One bad thing that came about, uh, or, or a poor performance, that I'm trying to dig into more, but our the cooperative response center, our call center where all the storm calls go, they were completely inundated and overwhelmed, all three of their call centers across the country. They were covering storms from Washington State <clears throat> all the way down to Houston, Texas, and up to Maine. So they were calling and asking utilities to take over their own storm so they didn't have to dispatch, etc. Uh, which I had actually already done when they started making that request. So we got we got sideswiped by the by the inundation of them, but it did affect customers having confidence that we were getting the information. We were, but it was hard to confirm that. So I just State that here to hopefully a lot of customers are watching this or will watch this over the coming days and know that we're working on that. Uh, question that came up recently is where is Harvard Electric at in renewable energy standard requirements? Primarily, where are we at in reaching 75% uh, renewable? Okay, 75% renewable portfolio of all our sources by the year 2032. And right now, HD is at 53%. So we have 10 years, next 10 years, to increase that by 12%. We're actually ahead of 
schedule, and we should reach that uh, easily in 12 years. So we're ahead of the curve and looking good on that. One, I guess that's a question a lot of people have been kind of wondering about. Uh, Wolk at Hydro is, has cranked out 2.9 million uh, Y hours so far. <coughs> In as of November, is our most recent numbers. And 811 is up to about 2.3 million. Those are both big contributors to that 63% renewability in the portfolio. Um, that's uh, in our purchase power. Uh, it's kind of hurting us pretty good this year. We're 129,000 or 4% over budget. But that's primarily driven by the natural gas market. And I know you've Heard about that in the paper, and I think some of the commissioners have reported to you about that. Um, and the recovery ratio has been excellent, averaging right at 100%, so very happy with that. Uh, year to date revenues are 2.5% under budget, and year to date expenses are 5.2% over budget, a uh, direct result of our. Uh, Need for a rate increase. And what else is that exactly? Oh, yes. And at our, my commissioner's meeting Monday night, we talked about the um, fact that we haven't had our joint meeting that we've been looking to get scheduled. And we tried to nail down a couple of dates to propose to all of you, which we really struck out with through the month of February. So I said I would ask all of you to propose a couple of days for us to consider in March. So if you guys could do that, and I'll open up the question. We can try to propose dates in March, but uh, three of us are up for re-election, so we'll see how that pans out. OK, so after after town meeting's over, we can maybe line something up the following week. Or make a plan the following week, something like that. Yeah, I think that would be yep. probably good. If we're looking that far out, I think it, it makes more sense to do that. Okay, I'll just bring that as feedback from, to my bosses. Great. Uh, questions? Um, Mike, this, yeah, this came up at um, our last like, board meeting, Mike, but, but there were some folks who were wondering about EV chargers, and I know that we've brought this up many times with you, but I wasn't sure if it would be a good time for you to just give a little update on the AGD EV charger that you've talked about. Yeah, uh, the power charger is still prepped and ready to go and waiting for our retaining wall to be replaced. It was going right where the retaining wall is. If you look out back when you're passing by, you'll see it electric disconnect on a post and then the, the post right next to it is where the charge is going but it needs to be uh, four feet lower in grade so that people can use it and our contractor uh, has fallen apart for me here the last two two attempts to get here uh, he is scheduled to be back in april we'll see how it goes but uh, our my plans with that are to really use it as a test station to see what the real interest is and the real use of it is um, for the rainforest. And I have promoted it also as a station to for uh, trail users to utilize on the weekend because I mean, we get a perfect place for people to park and charge the car and go for a walk or walk their dog or whatever here. So it's a great spot uh, in this building, but I don't have a definite uh, time frame set on it at this moment. Heard on the radio the other day that Vermont per capita has more charging stations than any other state already. <laughs> any? I couldn't hear you. Dan. The other thing, Gailey, is to, we, uh, we have to add a new tariff to our to our rate tariff, listing of rate tariffs in order to operate that device, um, which isn't a big deal, but it's another another process that we have to go through with the regulations to get approval to use that. Is that because that's to the paper? Oh, sorry, Shane. 
Okay, uh, why do you have to add a new chair? What's the reasoning behind that? Uh, because we would have to charge a fee for it. So any fee that we are going to charge to rate payers, then the PUC has to approve it. Even though, you know, I mean, we do it at cost, whatever the cost of that is, we're not going to make any money on it, but we still have to get their approval. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so Mike, are you aware that Stowe Electric has a, a bunch of EV chargers and they seem to have partnered with somebody to do some sort of billing or to use somebody's a national app for the charging? Yeah, I know they have chargers and I know they're horrendously overpriced and that they are horrendously underutilized. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. One All right. So, I know we have a long meeting. I don't want to go down this whole way. I just want to let you know the person who brought us up at our last meeting was mentioning that they utilized the charging station at Memorial Valley Ford, which was really, really expensive. So I'm just curious, maybe we can talk about it at our combined board meeting, like what that tariff looks like and how, like, how that's going to look for, um, for HED and for private businesses that might want to have EV stations too. It'd be great to have it as an agenda item if we can. I'm okay with me. It's going to be your, your board and my, my board's agenda. So whatever you guys want is okay with me. Yeah, great. That would be interesting to be something I think that maybe a bunch of us could use some education on. All right. I'm going to move us on. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next is item one, select board to consider appointing Lucy Zenzian to the Hardwood Conservation Commission for the remainder of a three-year term expiring May 31st, 2025. And um, she, sent, she sent a letter of interest to me, right? And then I forwarded it yep. Yep, to you. So she's just... Um, yeah, interested in serving. So, Eric, just a really quick clarification. Has the, is Lucy currently serving or is she looking to serve? She's wanting to serve. Okay, and there wasn't anything besides the email and the folder? Correct. Right. Just my, I think it's awesome that we have somebody who wants to serve on the Conservation Commission, and maybe I'm wrong, but my um, it would be great to see a letter kind of explaining who she is and what her interest is, because that's typically what we kind of see. It doesn't have to be super long, but it looked like that was kind of an email saying, I'm happy to send a letter if you want me to. It was kind of the gist of that email that I got, unless I was missing something. And I personally would like to see them in person. You okay. know this. All right. But that's not a requirement, but it would be great. So do you want to put it off to next meeting and, and ask for a little more information? What she does or what's her background or... Yeah, that's fine. Or even better yet, come visit us. Okay. If they can. You will send a note. Got it. Got it. He's got it. All right, moving along. Next, item number two, select board to discuss potential sale of property the town owns off Treatment Plant Road. You boys want to buy the sewer plant. I think that's pretty <laughs> generous of you. Yeah. Appreciate it. We just fixed it up for you. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, let me just uh, kind of go ahead with what. Yeah, state your name first yeah, for so the Rick, record. Uh, Rick Walton. Okay. Uh, and Bill 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 okay. Uh, so essentially, uh, Opie and I had talked earlier last summer about the need for parking for the Yellow Barn. And obviously our location with the dealership being right next door that's trying to brainstorm some ideas for parking and if we have a we've been essentially required by Ford to install charging infrastructure at the dealership on premises um, and it requires it's a lot a lot of charging right, right now we have two one DC fast char two DC fast chargers that qualifies one in their requirements and by the end of 2023 where we need at least one more. Uh, so sorry, the, the 
ball rolling for us that we might be able to satisfy the town's needs and our needs by supplying a parking lot near on the rail trail and accessible for the yellow barn. And it was brought to my attention that this that the property we're talking about next to the sewage treatment plant was already in the works talking with the yellow barn. Um, we call them the yellow barn people. But they, but they want to be known by the yellow barn people. No, that's and, good. Uh, that's that. that's uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, essentially we're you know if if we're able to purchase the land uh, you know at a what very reasonable price we're prepared to take on almost all expense involved in right now we're proposing three uh, level three DC fast chargers and 10 19.2 kilowatt level two chargers which are the from what I understand the, the highest level two chargers you can get and the level threes are going to be you know we're not exactly sure what they're what level they're going to be but they're going to be the best we can get at the time so um, that's kind of our uh, short version of it that we're and, and your willingness to participate in this is because you need to do that to satisfy some of your business needs. So essentially, we need to install the chargers, and the way if you all spent 24 or 10 hours at the dealership, and you've been there plenty of that, with cars coming in and out, yep. it's kind of a madhouse, especially the Log Air Road, and we're not super excited about the idea of opening it up to the public. If it was on our property around all our new vehicles, we, you know, we get cars packed into it every month by a customer. Either they're looking at cars or getting a car service. It just it just happens when you have 300 cars a lot. So if we are if we decide to do it at our on our current property, we're probably gonna and you know, it won't be open to the public. It'll just be for our cars that we sell, our customers right. that are there for service. If we if so get that property. So some of these will be used by you as a dealership. So part of the requirements is for us to have an internal DC fast charger. So we would uh, effectively turn the one by the car wash that we currently have, turn that to our internal. Yep. So anything across the street would be for public use. We have to designate one for new car, one of the DC fast chargers for new car delivery. And I'm not 100% sure that we can use the, our internal as that, but um, I don't have to be 10 of those anyway. Ten of the level two, yeah. and so at least two, if not plenty of chargers for everyone there. Yeah, there will be. Yeah. So, I have a couple quick questions, Rick. I'm just looking at the property map that is included in the board folder. Just making sure that the red line is the LBRT right of way. So it looks like there's a, it's basically like a point four acre lot with the accident. Is that what the land that you're that's being referred to? I think you're right, Kaylee. That is yeah. the what we're referring to. Yeah. Basically, that section that runs okay. right out next to the road, all the road frontage. Okay, and then the, basically we're proposing a parking lot, which was which was as you're saying already a part of the yellow bar. It was already something we discussed. Um, I guess my question, my question is um, I, I understand that that would be a lot of infrastructure and a lot of money to put all those EV stations in. Um, just wondering about uh, owning versus leasing. And then um, that's just a question. And then also, this is not really a question for you, Rick. It's more of a question for us, which has come up before, but what our process is for selling town land and what we need to do about that. Um, maybe we don't have that conversation tonight, but. Um, that's something that we need to figure out. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I guess that's just my question. My first question is um, the benefits of pulling versus like a long term lease. Um, and then um, <coughs> some sort of MOU if we do end up either leasing or selling it around um, Yellow Barn and public use and low value for use. Yeah, so uh, I, I broached the subject with corporate and Ford, and as you can imagine, dealing with one of the largest companies in the world, it's not easy, and they've made it pretty clear that property has to be adjoining and owned by the dealership. It has, at the, uh, I think their verbiage is the main dealership campus, which would be where obviously- Right, they, they want to make sure that, that they're using, you know, they're, yeah, they're using that, they're getting some green chips or somewhere. Yeah, this somewhere. isn't exactly ideal for them. They want customers being coming to the dealership and having, you know, that be their home for charging, not just service and shopping for vehicles. 
where, you know, part a big part of this is I think that this is a you know, we we invest a lot. You know, we both grew up in Harvard. We invest a lot. We're not going anywhere, and we think that this project doing it the way we're proposing could be something that really does a lot for the town, a lot for the yellow barn, a lot for the rail trail. Uh, I think it's a win-win-win. So that's you know really the. Uh, and in order to do that, in order for Ford to consider that qualified, we have to own the land. We can't lease it. Um, have you, have, has anybody kind of sketched out how many parking spots total there would be? I have what I think was the Yellow Barns plan, and I think we can. Oh, yeah. We did 50. have that. And that's, you know, we're open, you know, there's not, yeah. but we're thinking, you know, anywhere from, because we're going to have room for 13 chargers, mm -hmm. but obviously there's a lot, a lot of, Ice vehicles still on the road, so I think that 40 to 50 parking spots. Yeah, I mean, that would be. And have you checked? There, there's also the, um, is it the flood way or the, it's, there's some flood type thing yeah, through we, there. We, we haven't, uh, we've got uh, John Brenier does all our engineering. We haven't, we've, I've talked to him about the project. He hasn't dug into it because you know, yeah. we don't know yeah. where this is going to go, but, uh, you know, I imagine that there's going to be some. And, and notice our vision is different than what the yellow barn had for parking. And so I don't know how much homework they put into it. There's some things there that they know have found out already. But obviously, you know, we're going in this with anything. That was overflow anything. parking for the yellow barn, right? Yeah, the it idea was. was we're primary parking. Uh, it's, yes. But there's the yellow barn needs more parking. And so the idea was to, to do it to try to do some parking there, because it's also a town-owned parcel. If we could do it in conjunction and it still remains public parking, right. actually really public parking, then yes. that could work. I think that the things we were looking at is um, trying to avoid impervious surface um, and trying to limit any structures to things that are allowed in the floodway. And I don't, I, there are things. There's no things way you can avoid impervious surface because it's, it doesn't matter. Gravel, gravel's impervious. Nowadays, yeah. nowadays, the, the state is going to look at whatever we do, so. Right. You know. So, know. Well, there are pervious paving options. They're more expensive. They're like the, there are. I know. I mean, it doesn't need to be. No, know, I right? agree. So, I agree. I mean, that's, yeah, well. I mean, but I, I agree, but I'm not sure that you, if you if you need a state permit, I don't know that you're going to be able to do oh, it if you put in a lot. So let's talk about whether we want to do the project or not, let the permits fall where they may. Uh, yeah, that's... Well, what? Sherry? Katie, what did you just say, please? I said let's, I mean, let's, the question at hand is whether we want to do this project and move forward. Let the permits fall where they may. Don't worry about the permits. We shouldn't be worried about permits right now. It's way too early. I will say, it's kind of the attitude we've taken is that, you know, if, if we, if you, and I would be more than open to, obviously, we, we should have something is, if we can't follow through, then it's not, you know, we don't just get the land. Like, right. if we can't, we should have some agreement or right. you know, something that says we don't provide. Yeah. Because Danny's 100% right that we could get in there and Grenier could say, this can never happen. The state might come in. I, I, I've talked to the state, um, you know, nobody of importance with when it comes to the zoning of it, but, um, you know, they're obviously very excited about the project. And Grenier, from all the homework he's done for the car wash, he thinks that it's possible, but by all means, you know, I think right. that's great actually. And that's kind of what we're willing to do here is we're going to take, we'll take the ball and run with it. Or, you know, we, so we're going to be creating more parking. Than, than they need anyway. I mean, they're, 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 you guys aren't really looking for a parking yeah. other than the charging stations, which at 13 will be more than enough for everyone, I would think. For a while, you would think. I mean, that's where, I've said before, where charging stations should be, not up at the village parking lot here in the village, you know, or because of, I always thought they should be a little, bit, a little bit more out of town. Hmm. Is there any downside to this? I'm wondering. I 
Sorry, Miss. I'm just wondering if at some point, Danny, it might be where you're sitting that's making like specifically it's hard to hear you. Maybe. And we really want to hear you. I don't know what's going on. Maybe <laughs> slide that mic that way. That's not. Hear me now. That's that's not the mic. <laughs> Hello. Oh, great. Awesome. I don't think this one works. We can circle that. So, so it sounds like there's no harm in kind of putting into your work or in terms of figuring out what an LED looks like, what I like, can basically have a movie and Rick work together and figure out what this could look like and then vote on it once we have more information and we know that the permitting will work and all that good stuff. Hmm. Well, we should decide whether we want to. Please don't play with it. It does work for the family. Oh. I, I have a... I have a question. Um, we did have, we did have a. Um, Somebody steal shoes, do it. Someone come visit us at our last meeting and suggest that, uh, or state that mm -hmm. the parking, the charging of Moyle Valley Ford was roughly ten times the cost of yeah. equivalent charge at Stowe. So ten times the cost. Of I know, and this, and this I did want to chime in uh, earlier, but if anyone is curious about the charging, the prices, <clears> the <clears throat> With very little bit of research, you can see that we're super competitive. Um, Stowe, that's a municipality. Yes, so what? That's a municipality charger. Yeah, yeah. So it's the it's their electric so, department, right? Correct. Yep. So The Alchemist, the one that they speak of, is the one the, the level three charger that the Alchemist charges. I think yeah, I think it's twenty cents a minute. Excuse me. Yeah, twenty twenty cents an hour. Yeah. Or twenty dollars an hour. Yep. Um, and that's if, but if you go to, if you look, we did a study statewide, well, north of Rockland, and we fall, we're actually a penny less per kilowatt, or excuse me, a penny less per minute than any other D, uh, DC level three charger north of Rockland that's not owned. And that's yours, private entity owned, installed, paid right. for it. And that's, they can know, charge whatever they want. Right. Well, and that's by all means. So that's why we're competitive because we don't want to be like. And I, I brought it with us. We made eighty-eight dollars. <throat> we charged eighty-eight dollars more than we were billed by the utility for those charging stations last month. So, at one hundred fifty thousand dollar initial investment at eighty-eight bucks a month, it's, <laughs> it's going to you know, take a while. We're not making money on that by any means. No. So that's fine. Same thing with this project, obviously. We're right. Not, it's more about providing a service at this point. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy that, like I, I said it to Opie, that I, fifty percent of this, you know, venture is we need to do it. I think, you know, growing up here, I mean, it sounds corny, but when you pull into Hardwick and the yellow barn's going to be on your right, and you know, we plan on trying to do some more improvements to the dealership, and it's got a beautiful parking lot there with some, you know, charger, maybe solar canopy. I just think it's, you know, a real nice entrance to Hardwick. And that's half of it is that we want to provide a service and the other half is that if it works for us, you know, it benefits us. That What's the process for this? Just tell Opie to talk with these guys and get it going? <laughs> get the deal done, Opie. Well, you asked a great question when you said, what is the downside? What's the I downside don't see for one, us? But, yeah. You know. I can't see it, but I don't have as much imagination as maybe I should. Yeah. Um. So it seems it sounds like the kind of thing where there have to be you know some sort of uh, purchase and sales sketched out, and there be so, contingencies. Well, you, you right. like you probably don't want to buy it if you can't actually do it there, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So there probably have to be a process, yeah. and, and I'm not. I've, we've never, you know, we'll, we'll take anything for property. So yeah, we have to protect the town. I think it'd be important to have some clauses yeah. in there that we don't see the project through that we yeah right you know, it's not ours so, so as as far as conveying real estate that to kaylee's kaylee's question it's um there's vermont law on how we convey real estate and in order to do this if the board were to agree and the town were to agree there needs to be public hearings so the the community would be able to weigh in well there can be public there has to be public no, hearings. I don't think so. The only way, the only way there would not be public There's hearings two different ways if it was eminent, it. like eminent domain, like we had to okay, build so something. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, fine. But if we were going to convey real estate, there'd have to be yeah. a public process. 
but ultimately the select board decides. So unless, there unless are we other discussions to about real estate sales recently, yeah, which we've had too many of. <laughs> We're not real estate people. Right. The one thing we focused on is fair market value for the, for the real estate. So, and I heard you say that you would like to buy it at a good, you'd like to pay a good price and that you'd pay for most of the infrastructure. So those are the things that I think are important. You know, we understand you need to own it, but the, the building and the infrastructure questions need to be talked about. That's really important. Um, I think from my perspective, absolutely want to move forward with it. I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's great we have a business that wants to partner with us and absorb most of the cost, even though you didn't say you'd take it off. But uh, the, it's, a, it's less than a half acre of real estate that really was going to be a parking lot anyway, mm -hmm. that we were going to get nothing for mm -hmm. without any charging stations. So there's, at this level, I see no downside to not try to move forward. I don't know exactly how that path would work. I would think it would probably take some lawyers or something to, to see exactly, you know, and, and some serious talks about, you know, what percentage that you are going to pay versus because you're you're looking to put the infrastructure in place, but you're really not looking to take advantage of the infrastructure once it's in place. It's going to become public parking at that point. So to your point, you know, paying for the but paying for most of it is, is good. You just shouldn't have to pay for it all. Yeah, when I say when you say most of it, I mean I this project's going to be. A million, a million and a half. Right, for, and most of it's going to be your charging stations, right. not not the, not, the, to, not the not the impervious pavement. That just the units alone are going to creep in on five hundred thousand before wow. we hire an electrician. Before we talk to Hard Electric, before we move the pedal, you know, before yeah. we hire an engineer. So when we say most of it, I just I don't I don't foresee well, anything as far as right. like needing much from you guys. Because you guys, are, you're just <clears throat> talking out loud. You're 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 not looking for us to help at all with the infrastructure of the electric chargers. Uh, I would say the only thing would be the electric department figuring there's there's a lot that goes into us. Yeah. Mike's on. He knows that there's a lot. Right, to be but done but to yeah. No, but as far as pretty much from the property line on, yeah, that would be. I'm uh, us. I'm good. Um, it sounds like it sounds like the next step is to have the town. Um, to have both will be your office figure out the public hearings and the language around that um, and whatever other paths we need to move forward. Is that what I'm understanding? Like we can't make a decision tonight other than to say that yes, we want to have public hearings about this proposed project, correct? I think, I think we could say, what we could say tonight is it sounds like from what I'm hearing and correct me if I'm wrong that the board is generally of a uh, disposition to explore this further yeah I, I'll just note that today uh, we the LBRT Annie McLean from NBDA sent out a listing I don't know if you got that Eric um, this property is part of the is considered as on a list of part of the trailhead mm -hmm. so i think there's some research there possibly yeah but it probably could continue to be like what we had slated for this was parking not just for the yellow barn but also for the rail trail kind of just it would just be open yeah, that's <clears throat> we our discussions actually i think before with you with the town started with the state and that's absolutely their interest in the project is for a trailhead. I think the town's probably interested in the yellow barn more than they are the rail trail. Uh, both. And, yeah, I think the state is more interested in the rail trails. So. The, the, the concern that does come up to me, and it's you know, a little bit of paranoia about multinational corporations, <laughs> um, is that you know, we've got a half an acre here, roughly a half an acre, owned by a multinational corporations. And so the question in my mind is, what's the probability 25 years from now that Ford develops some interest in doing something and just 
it's their property, then they can come in it's and do it. It's not Ford's property. It's yeah, so, these guys' property. Yeah, so Ford were a franchise, and actually the, the property would be owned by uh, LV Properties, <coughs> which isn't anything to do with the dealership. <coughs> Some of the same partners, but, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we have a 30-year lease. I think the Memorial Valley Ford were a franchise, so we're not, we have no, Ford has no, they have no state really in anything on the property as far as what they own. They own everything um, <clears throat> the business does. So that, uh, it's a good question, but the, the franchise laws in Vermont, or dealer agreement with Ford, they would never have any rights to anything okay. as far as, you know, popping up one day. And trust me, if they could, they would have <laughs> done that by now. Put a nuclear warhead down around in a quarter of an acre. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah. I, I just wanted to just be timekeeper for a second. It seems like Eric, you're saying we're all in general, generally in agreement, and we have a pretty long agenda. Um, so, just if there's anything else, I just feel like we should probably figure out how we're. If we need to take a vote, everyone needs to take a vote on anything. I don't think we have something to vote on. I think that um, we could say that the board generally directs the town manager to continue this, um, figuring this out and how it would look and. Come back to us. Is that okay with everybody? Move it down the move yes. it down the yeah. move it down the, the Well it needs to yeah. needs to mature a little, so keep working on it. I think that generally I There's think, some moving parts here that need to be right. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be yeah. figured out and so you get let's figure it out. Okay. I think it sounds like a good proposal. Thank you very much for bringing it. Yeah. Um, all right, thanks. I'm gonna move us on. Uh, next is where are we? Lucy's here. Oh, we're gonna back. We're gonna thank you. We're gonna actually move backwards. Lucy uh, is here. Lucy is here. And um, Lucy, if we love we we were just saying that we uh, were very grateful that that you're interested in the conservation commission, but we were. <laughs> Um, hoping just to hear a few words from you about your interest in, uh, or and or experience in conservation commission type uh, topics. Absolutely, yeah. Sorry about the lateness. I tried to call in. The phone number wasn't working for me. So Oops. I tried to find a computer <laughs> kind of quickly. <laughs> so I apologize for that. But um, yeah, so I, for work, work for the Natural Resources Conservation Service, which is an agency within the USDA. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have, you know, some amount of expertise dealing with conservation, and, you know, we kind of try to put conservation efforts down on farms, but, you know, lots of things with stormwater management and such that, you know, could really be of interest to the town of Hardwick. Um, and I've been to one of the uh, Conservation Commission meetings, and I think that you know, I would be able to be helpful, and I have like a really strong interest here, and I I love using all the Hardwick public, you know, lands and trails and everything every day. So it's important for me to be involved in stuff like that. Great, thank you very much. Yes. I think that's exactly what we wanted to hear. Right. <laughs> Do we need a motion? <laughs> yes. I move we appoint Lucy to the to the, oh, to the conversation. Uh, appoint Lucy. Zanzizian, did I get that right? Sorry. <laughs> to the it's easier to think it is. It's uh, like engine with the letter Z in front of it. It's engine. Oh, okay. Great. So Kaylee made the motion to appoint Lucy to the remainder of a three year term expiring um, May 31st, 2025. Do we have a second? Second. Wiz has a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Kaylee, Kaylee made the motion and there we go. All right, so unanimously carries. Thank you very much, Lucy. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you guys very much. I look forward to working with you. Yeah, same here. All right, awesome. We're going to move on because we're running. We're actually still ahead. Yeah, we're, good. we're okay. Yep. Where are we? Somebody help me. Three? Item three. Number three. Item three, select board to review and consider approving the gravel pit bond documents. This is the moment that Tanya has been waiting for, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? huh? She says, oh. <laughs> um, so 
This is because we need to um, put together the bond documents in anticipation of a bond vote on town meeting day um, to purchase a gravel pit on Route 14 north of town that's going to be very beneficial to the town. So we hope that people read about it, um, get excited about it, and come vote for it. <clears throat> uh, but for bond documents, what do we need to do? I yep. look at them. Yep. Yep. So, so make a motion to approve the bond documents for the purchase of the Davis gravel pit. Sounds good. Second. Got a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's everyone. Motion carries. Thank you. Some of us will sign. Sweet. Um, awesome. And next, item four, our select board to discuss an RFP, a request for proposal for town reappraisal and consider approving a vendor and authorizing the town manager to execute a contract. So um, my understanding is that we did uh, put out a request for proposal and Casey even said she followed up with folks she thought might be willing to um, put in a proposal, but we, in the end, just got one, right? Yes. And they are the same company that we contract with to do our current assessments. I'm under the impression it's very that common too. for um, assessors to only um, reappraise the towns that they work for. Um, because when I researched other assessors, mm -hmm. I was told by them we only do reappraisals for those that we work for. So. Yeah, I it's probably it's because, practice. and everybody's got plenty of work everybody right now because advice. most of the towns in Vermont need to be every re, yeah, not every, but most of them, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, need need to be reappraised. So, is that is that price uh, in line with what it should be? Ish. I mean, do we know? It is what it well, is. Well, we didn't right? get more than one. We don't have any choice. Yeah, we don't yeah. have a comparison. No, but we've done it before. We have, and <clears throat> I think it was <clears throat> over 100,000 last time, but I can't remember I for sure. Yeah, I'm sure it was over. Time, but I can probably look it up. It wasn't, how long ago was that? 2016. Yeah, 2016. So it won't really be done until 25, so it'll be like nine years difference. Yeah. So we need a motion? Wow, so we contract with them already? Well, they'll get started. We're on their step completed. right now. Uh, work, um, I think it doesn't commence until 24. Right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, but we're in 23. No, they'll know, well, they start working the fall of 23. I make a motion fall that. Uh, fall no. fall I move that we contract with New England Municipal Consultants. Or that I think we want you to move the. Um, All right. That Except we, the we the, the, the town manager to have the, to have the town manager the town yep. it, and authorize him to execute. That's what I did. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so Danny makes the motion to have the town manager engage in a contract with uh, New England Municipal Consultants on our behalf. Second. There you go. I'm starting to get the gist of these meetings. <laughs> uh, do we have a discussion on this? We have one option. They've done good work for us in the past. And their price seems fair, at least relative to what it was last time. So, Move the question. All right. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. That's everyone. Motion carries. Thank you. So we'll, we'll be... Um, we'll be working with them again. So we're on... Item five, select board to consider approving the final draft of the uh, fiscal year 24 budget. And I think Casey's got just, we've got some changes that she wants to call to our attention, but they're not major. A lot of times. Yeah, it's kind of amazing, isn't it? Oh, oh. May, may I have five seconds here? In 1860, the town 
voted a 33 and a third percent rate to fund the operations of the town. December 1860, 33 and a third percent. Of what? Tax of, of the grand list. Of Wow, tax rate. Yeah, in March they lowered it to thirty, but you know I just thought thirty percent. That's an eye popper. Well, yeah, and I mean, probably back then there was a very small percentage of people who were actually paying taxes. I don't know what I, I bet. there's there's something going on there, but yeah. just on the wow. surface, be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love your ears. <laughs> You're going to bring that up at town meeting? I am. So, Casey. Be grateful. <laughs> okay. So, here's the summary. Yeah. Um, and I just will highlight what's been changed since our last meeting. Great. So, total budget um, up 4.8%. Um, so, since the last meeting, we received actual figures for dispatch services, PD and fire. So, those were updated to reflect actual, as well as our county taxes. Um, fire capital was increased by 5,000, <coughs> and I did make some adjustments in the schedule um, on the fire equipment, um, increased the cost of the ladder truck, and oh. looked at some future years and how much we might need to set aside for that. Um, so I did increase it 5,000 this year, and then it's going to probably go up like 20,000 a year in order to spend hopefully 750 on a ladder truck. Um, but yes, that was that was a small adjustment. Um, the equity committee requested um, to increase from fifteen hundred to two thousand for some trainings, um, and then the only other real change was we knew we were able to figure out um, what health insurance plan um, the new library director would take and adjust accordingly. That did decrease their budget by about six thousand um, wow, dollars. And that's so something. here here we land four point eight percent. Yeah. See, uh, I'll just say that in a year when Social Security said the cost of living increase was 8.7% and we've seen inflation rates and lending rates going way up beyond anything that we've seen in decades, it seems, um, that a 5% increase is, is not bad. It's not well, bad. I make a motion that we approve the budget for FY24 as Presented. Second. More discussion about the budget? We've looked. Um, I'll just <coughs> think that really. Sorry. Go ahead, Kaylee. Oh, I just have a really, really quick question um, about appropriations. I can wait until after this if that's more appropriate. Yeah, if it's appropriations and not budget, then yeah, let's. What do you have, Sherry? Mine's appropriations too, so we'll just wait. Okay, so we have a motion uh, on the table to approve the uh, budget for our, for our warning for the voters to vote on. Um, all in, second. And we have a second. So I think you already had a second, right? Yeah. You already had a second from Wiz, but thank you. So all in favor of approving the budget as presented tonight, please say aye. 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 Okay, and I got an aye from Sherry and an aye from Kaylee. So that's everybody. So, and I really want to say thank you, Casey, for all your work on this. Holy cow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I know that there's a lot that goes into it. I know we call you a bean counter sometimes, but <laughs> you do a really good job counting the beans. Just call me Rapunzel, yeah. Uh, all right. That's great. So, um, Oh yeah, well, let's circle back. Do you guys want to do your appropriation questions now? Yep. You want me to go first, Kaylee? Sure. I just thought I'd make a little announcement. Um, sadly, um, after many years of the North East Kingdom Arts Council board getting their act together and requesting an appropriation for the townhouse, uh, we did not get enough signatures this year. So it will relieve the pages of the annual report of all of our info about our narrative, and it will also take away $3,500 requests for this year, um, which will help things in some other way, and, uh, and we'll be back next year. Thank you. Sorry, so I'm interested. 
So, Sherry, what caused that, Sherry? Do well, you think? we, you know, we had fewer events, and I think we just, we, yeah, we're out of practice with doing it, but, uh, and, you know, a couple of our board members have been out of the country a lot. I'm sitting at home with COVID, and so, yeah, it just didn't come together. Hmm. Bummer. Yeah, because that really, you know, That's that important. Was, that was the intent of making people do it go through the process, but also, everybody's got to go through it. So. But it focus their minds. Next year, yep. they'll, they'll get it done. All right. Kaylee? My question was um, kind of related to that, I guess, which is because I noticed some petition going around for community organizations that we haven't funded before. Um, when, I guess my question is, Casey, when we get a sense of what really the appropriations ask looks like today we have the number because the deadline was today so Tanya um, actually just gave me the figure um, because we had some that were in the pipeline but didn't end up getting enough signatures four so um, which was four of them so our total is 37,261 is the proposed which is less than the draft budget where I kind of showed the impact on tax rate and such. So it is less than what we anticipated. Wow. Because it was 45, okay, 861 on that page. Yes, correct. And so. Turned out to be 37? Yeah. Yes. So that's been turned, mm -hmm. or not quite, but. Yeah. It's not one. No. All right. So just a quick yeah. discussion about the petitions and getting them signed. I, I think it's a, I, I think we did good when we started making people do that. Every three years, isn't it? Every three years, because it's putting people to go through the exercise. Unfortunately, NECART shows that even a strong organization can, it can be fail in, a, in what one would think would be an easy task. Yeah, and if there's four five, more. We had five new requests, and only one of them got their signatures. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. It's a, it's a challenge for, especially, I can't imagine new people because. You know, you, you can't just walk around Hardwick and get the signatures because many people at the, hardly anyone at the dental clinic, anyone at the health center, anyone at the schools, there, there's not a lot of Hardwick voters that are working in Hardwick right now. Um, no. It's an interesting little curve level. I found that out with my last petition for select board. Right. It was also, it's right. like I used to just go to the Ford garage, well, <laughs> you go to the Ford garage now, and there's only two guys in there that work in Harvard, live in Harvard, you know. Uh, town garage, even. I mean, we not they all don't live in Harvard. They all used to live in Harvard. Um, so, yeah, yeah interesting. Hmm. All right. Um, all right, we're going to move us on to item seven, select board to set the date and time for a special meeting uh, next week to... Actually, item six, because we removed item... Oh. So there's not seven anymore. Okay. Item six. Six. Um, to, uh, so anyway, we need to set a time for a special meeting to approve the town meeting warning, um, which is the first or second page in the, in the report. I so, believe Tuesday morning would be great if, if we can get at least three people flexible. available, like 8 a.m., 830, something like that on Tuesday morning would be great. Can warn it tomorrow. Uh, Works for me. Hang on. So. I can't be there, but you can go without me. Okay. Sorry, I don't know what day you're talking about. Tuesday morning, um, the. Um, I don't know what that is. 24th. Like 24th. Tuesday the 24th. At what time? Well, eight o'clock? I was thinking no, eight. No, I can't do eight. You can't do eight. I got an eight fifteen with. Can you Dr. do nine? Morgan. Can you do nine? I could do. Nine I got an eight eight fifteen with Doctor Morgan, so yeah. So nine. maybe nine thirty. I don't know in case. Well, let's do seven thirty. No. <laughs> Six thirty. I could do seven? eight. All we're doing it's just a. It's just. It should a, be just. Yeah, early. I can do eight. Oh uh, yeah, she'll she'll create a folder. I'll. We can do 8.30. Yeah, yeah, we can. No, let's just do 8. Because I got a doctor's point at 8.15. I'll go over it after. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Perfect. Because yeah. then it'll take us 15 Sherry? 
Uh, eight? It's okay. I have to be at the health center at eight thirty-two, so I'm thinking I can shift out again. Okay. Eight. Okay. Eight o'clock. So January twenty-fourth. That's Tuesday. That's where at eight a.m. Uh, we'll do the memorial room here, and I'll warm yep. tomorrow. Uh, just just going to bring breakfast. Morning. Oh. Bring yes. Breakfast. <coughs> breakfast. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Well, well, it'll sense. either be down there or up here. It'll be on the agenda because we have to make sure the room's available. But we'll find you. downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So I got the, so Tuesday, January 24th, 8 a.m. 8, 8, oops, that, that's a p.m. A.m. Got it. Okay. Um, so we need uh, select board reports, new business or old business. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? No? Uh, oh, I have one. Uh, so we, Yellow Barn was scheduled to open bids today. Unfortunately, we had to push our bid opening back until Tuesday, 4 p.m. Um, and because uh, because we had to, so we're gonna we're anticipating still getting two bids. So we're very hopeful that the project breaks ground and happens very soon. Yes, we are. Better are. happen pretty soon. The yellow barn is going to be in the yellow basement. <laughs> I, it's totally true. It's not getting any better it's there. It's not getting any better. No, it isn't. It, not <coughs> it doesn't look good. It's been about four, five years now. Four, yeah. Five years yeah. no one's been in it. Yep. No, heat. no maintenance. No maintenance. Yep. In an old barn. Looks tired. Which is going to be tired. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it matters really, but at this point, but we need to get it. Need to get it done. Yeah. Be way better than having to pick you it up. need to move for executive session. We do need a motion to move to executive session. Do um, you want to read that? I move that we move to executive session pursuant to 1 BSA 313 to include town manager, HED general manager, and legal counsel for the town and HED to discuss potential litigation. And we're going to do that downstairs in your office, correct? So we're going to. Uh, close this Zoom, and then we'll start one down there. Rebooted. And it'll be the same for for Mike and Brooke. Is it going to be the Different. same? Different. They have it. They no. have the link. Yeah. Okay. And so does Sherry. Oh yeah. Oh, Kaylee. Sherry and Kaylee. I'll, I'll I'll second that. <laughs> You're going to second the move. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. So. Uh, we're going to move to executive session. Thank you. Yeah, we all email you the link.